I would now like to provide you with an overview of each of these common enhanced inspection technologies. So for the next several slides, I'm going to show you some photographs of the technology, give you some example results from these, uh, these types of inspections. And uh, where feasible, where it makes sense, I'm going to show you some videos of these technologies in action. Possibly the most common enhanced inspection technology in the industry is closed circuit inspections. Now, for those not familiar, this inspection involves deploying a small vehicle into the culvert and then digitally recording the interior condition of that culvert. So this small vehicle, sometimes called a crawler, is equipped with onboard lighting and cameras. Uh, there's, here's an example of two different types of camera. Uh, you know, the one on the left is a very small camera, so that's suitable for very small culverts. And uh, the one on the right, it's a little bit bigger, so it can be deployed in larger culverts. It's got bigger tires, so it's more maneuverable. Now, a, a key feature of these cameras are they are very maneuverable. So the camera operator can drive into the culvert, and they can maneuver the camera so they can pan and tilt to fully record the damage on the pipe's wall. The uh, photo on the right here shows a camera that's starting to pan upwards so that you can get a very good view of the culvert's joint condition. Now, if you have a culvert that has standing water, so perhaps water that's knee length or waist length, uh, you can attach the CCTV camera to a float, which we're seeing here in this picture, and then you know tether the, tether the float to a line and then feed that down a culvert. And you can then inspect the condition of the culvert even though it's partially flooded. Another key feature of a CCTV camera is that the units often have an operator that's located nearby in a control vehicle. So it'll be some sort of small truck. So the operator inside this control vehicle will be responsible for driving the camera, you know, stopping the camera when they see defects, and then fully record the damage that they're seeing. These operators have sophisticated inspection software inside the, the, the trucks. So as they go along and as they inspect the culvert, they're conducting real-time evaluations and identification of defects that they're seeing. So an advantage of having a inspection vehicle on site is that these operators can inspect in real time. And then also at the end of the inspection, often they can print out a, a one page summary of the inspection and of the damage that they're finding in this culvert. So this is an example CCTV video recorded by MnDOT. So as you can see, the video is in high definition. So the operator has deployed the camera in the culvert. He's starting to drive down this culvert. And uh, as he gets to this joint, he makes an observation about the joint's condition, stops the camera, pans it, and then will tilt the camera in a 360 degree sweep to obtain full video documentation of this joint's condition. So in addition to getting a video recording of the culvert's condition, um, CCTV software can also generate hard copy summaries of the inspection. Uh, these reports look different depending on the type of software that the inspector is using, but for the most part, they include the same information. Uh, most include a schematic of the culvert, which we see here on the left side of this diagram. Uh, and then there's footages along the length of the culvert. And uh, at each footage, there's a, a defect or an observation that's made. So you know, you can take this and you can very quickly, in one sheet, look at a summary and overview of the condition of that culvert. Now, I like using these hard copy inspections when I receive a large number of inspection videos. So I might get a hard drive with 50 videos on it. Uh, the, one of the first things I do is I print out all these PDF summaries that are in the hard drive. And I can flip through them and I can figure out which of these 50 culverts are in the absolute worst condition. Because often, if you have a culvert that's, you know, imminently going to fail, what you want to do is very quickly figure out where is that culvert and look at that one first. So it helps prioritize the inspection, which will then get a speedier rehabilitation. Now, CCTV inspections, they generate very valuable video documentation for a relatively low cost. Uh, MnDOT owns several CCTV units. So if you disregard the cost to purchase the CCTV camera, and the truck. So if you're just considering labor, um, and you also disregard the cost to travel to the site, which could be variable depending on where the uh, site is, 
Uh, CCTV inspection with in-house staff is estimated to cost about 46 cents per foot. So that's the cost of a two-person crew doing a CCTV inspection. Now, you could also choose to hire a contractor to conduct these CCTV inspections. A uh, ballpark cost to contract somebody in the state of Minnesota runs about a dollar to three dollars per foot to inspect a culvert. Um, you know, there's a pretty wide range here, but this tends to be a ballpark good estimate for budgetary purposes. Now, for planning purposes, you can assume that uh, CCTV inspections are conducted at a rate of about 30 feet per minute. So 30 feet per minute is a best practice for the minimum speed that one should travel through a culvert. So if you have a, you know, several thousand feet of, of, of pipe to inspect, uh, if you divide that by 30 feet per minute, that's going to give you a good idea of a, the amount of time that the inspector should be spending uh, inside those pipes. Now, an advantage of CCTV technology is that it's a very common technology. So wherever you are in the state, you can pretty much find a specialty contractor who can provide this type of inspection. Uh, CCTV is also low cost relative to the amount of video data you receive. So we're talking, you know, a dollar to three dollars contracted per foot. You get permanent video documentation of condition. So also, this is a permanent record of culvert condition. So when you do receive the video files, you can archive these in a hard drive or on a server and you can pull them up in the future to look at the condition of the culvert at a point in time. So, for example, if you did a CCTV inspection immediately after installation of a new culvert, you can save that and you're always going to have video documentation of what that culvert looked like at day one in its service. And that's very valuable to try to understand the rate of a culvert's degradation over time. Now, some disadvantages of CCTV. Um, CCTV cameras are sensitive to site conditions. So you know, if you have a very dirty pipe or a pipe that has a lot of standing water, uh, you want to be careful because you don't want that, that camera to go underwater or you know, get debris all over it. Uh, image quality can vary depending on a uh, camera operator. So you, know, you need to make sure that the camera operator that you have employed to do this work uh, is properly lighting the culvert and has you know, the image quality set up properly. Um, another huge disadvantage of CCTV inspection is that uh, data storage can be very cumbersome. So, you know, you get digital video, high quality digital video of a culvert, um, and, and you can expect that these videos are going to run between 200 megabytes to several gigabytes per culvert that's inspected. Uh, so you can start having issues when you have, you know, hundreds of culverts that have been inspected. So now you've got hundreds of gigabytes of data to manage. Uh, finally, another disadvantage is uh, that it is key that you have an experienced camera operator running the CCTV inspection. So as an engineer, you rely on the camera operator to identify problems in the pipe and know when to stop the camera and fully document that problem. You know, there's nothing that's more frustrating than an inexperienced camera operator who quickly drives past uh, very obvious damage in the culvert, and you're not getting good video documentation of that damage. Um, so again, operator experience is very much key to the quality of the inspection. The uh, next type of inspection we're going to talk about is the HIVE inspection. HIVE stands for Hydraulic Inspection Vehicle Explorer. And uh, this equipment is an innovative inspection tool that was developed by MnDOT's Rochester District. So HIVE inspections are similar to traditional CCTV inspection. Uh, the difference is that HIVE is a leaner piece of equipment, so it's smaller and it's lighter than a CCTV camera. Um, but similar to a CCTV camera, there's a digital camera and lighting mounted to a remote controlled vehicle. So also similar to a CCTV inspection, the uh, HIVE camera operator is going to drive this camera through a culvert to record the internal condition of that culvert. HIVE cameras are portable. So unlike many CCTV cameras, uh, one can pick a HIVE camera up and uh, carry it to the site and deploy it that way. So you don't have to rely on a large truck that has to have vehicle access to a culvert. So what we see here is an example Hive camera inspection. And as you can see, the uh, video quality is on par with CCTV here. The uh, camera operator, he's driving down this culvert, 
And uh, because the Hive camera is lighter than a CCTV camera, uh, what this operator is able to do is, is use the camera's uh, big tires to, tr to drive over uh, the debris we're seeing here. So, you know, you can get out to a pipe, and even if you haven't given it a pre-inspection to figure out if it needed to be flushed or cleaned, the uh, Hive camera's maneuverability allows it to drive over this big debris, debris deposit here, and you can still get some good video inspection. Now, the uh, cost of a Hive inspection, uh, you have to build the camera. So the uh, cost of the materials to build the camera run between about $1,000 dollars to about a thousand five hundred dollars per camera um, the inspections can then be conducted with one person so assuming MnDOT's labor rates and disregarding the cost to travel to a site uh, the cost of conducting a hive inspection runs about 23 cents per foot so it's it's even a little more cost effective than say a traditional cctv camera When you compare the cost of building a Hive camera unit to the cost of retaining a contractor to do contracted CCTV inspection, uh, you can start seeing a capital cost payback of constructing a new Hive camera. So to illustrate this, let's say that we built a new Hive camera unit for $1,500. This is the upper end, the upper limit of what it costs to build a Hive unit. So we sink the uh, $1,500 to build the Hive camera unit. Now, if we retain a specialty CCTV contractor to inspect 200 feet of culvert at a cost of $3 per foot, uh, it's going to be a contracted cost of $600. Uh, the labor to do similar work using a Hive camera is going to be about $50. So then we have this inspection contractor now inspect two 200 foot pipes. Uh, it's going to cost about $1,200. Uh, similarly, it's going to cost about $100 of MnDOT labor. Now, by the time we have somebody inspect three pipes, so they're inspecting 600 feet of culvert, it's going to cost MnDOT about $1,800 of, of contractor labor. And as you can see, that uh, exceeds the cost of building a new camera and then doing the 600 feet of inspection using the Hive camera and in-house labor. So we can see that there's a payback after about three pipes that are inspected using a Hive camera. Now, this isn't to say that CCTV cameras are a lesser tool than a Hive camera, but what this is showing is that a Hive camera is a viable, cost-effective method of inspecting culverts. So the advantages of Hive inspection, uh, this is your least cost uh, method to obtain video documentation of a culvert's internal condition. Uh, minimal staff are required to do a hive inspection. Uh, you really only need one person to do that type of inspection. Hive cameras are lightweight, so you can carry it out to a site and uh, you can drive it through a culvert without getting stuck in debris quite so much because the, uh, the, the camera doesn't weigh quite as much. Now, some disadvantages of hive inspection. Uh, it is a leaner technology, so it doesn't have as many bells and whistles as a CCTV inspection. Uh, hive inspections lack digital footage measurements, uh, so we don't have a digital measurement of the camera's orientation inside the pipe when it sees some sort of defect. Uh, hive cameras also have limited uh, opportunities to uh, code defects that you're observing in the field. Uh, CCTV cameras have that inspection vehicle that is usually located adjacent to the site. So there's somebody controlling the camera and coding the defects inside this inspection vehicle. Hive cameras, you don't have that. So you have to take the video documentation and then post-process it to identify the defects. The next enhanced inspection technology we're going to talk about is multiple sensor inspections. So a multiple sensor inspection unit is uh, a crawler that's similar to a CCTV crawler. And then what one does is attach various sensors onto that crawler. As the crawler drives through the culvert, it's going to collect all of this data about the internal condition. And then that data can be evaluated to give you some very detailed documentation of the geometry or the condition inside that pipe. So a common sensor people use are laser ring scanners. 
So what this is, is a device that's attached to the crawler and it's gonna emit a ring of laser light. And that laser light's gonna reflect off the internal uh, surface of the culvert. And then what that scanner can do is, is measure the distance that light is traveling. And it's gonna give you a very good, very highly detailed uh, understanding of what the profile of that culvert is at that point. A, uh, another scanner people use are, are sonar scanners. And this is often used uh, in conjunction with a laser ring scanner. Uh, and what sonars can do is measure the profile of the culvert below the water level. You can attach an inclinometer to this multiple sensor unit. And so what an inclinometer does is measure the pitch of the culvert's invert. So you can understand, you know, has the culvert been constructed uh, at a slope in accordance with the design documents? Uh, you can also measure the pitch and try to figure out, has the culvert started to sag? Uh, so the, uh, you know, the invert's starting to fail and sag. And you might have an issue that way as well. These units typically are pretty heavy, so uh, they are truck portable, so you need to bring a truck to the site uh, with the vehicle uh, to then deploy it into the culvert. So a uh, disadvantage of multiple sensor inspections is that there really aren't any large vendors in Minnesota that can provide these services. So for this project, we had to pilot test multiple sensor inspections. and. Uh, the you know, lowest cost vendor we could find was one that would mobilize to the site uh, at a cost of about $8,500. So once they were mobilized to the site, uh, they did this inspection uh, at a cost of about $6.50 per foot. Uh, now that included the cost of collecting the data and also the, the rather high cost of um, you know, post-processing of the data, evaluating it and giving us a, uh, a summary report of the uh, multiple sensor results that they were uh, developing. Now, the uh, rate of inspection that one can expect for a multiple sensor uh, type inspection is going to vary based on site conditions and the uh, types of sensors that you have on your unit. Uh, we were seeing a production rate of about 3,000 feet per day for this project. So was, I think that's a pretty good ballpark estimate of uh, how fast one can inspect a pipe using multiple sensor equipment. Now, what we see here is a uh, video that was provided to us by a vendor we, we worked with on this project, Red Zone Robotics. And uh, this is an example of their uh, laser scan sonar crawler. Now, this is a video of a 3D model developed using uh, multiple sensor uh, laser scan data. Uh, and so this laser scan data was patched together to give us this three-dimensional model of the inside of, of this, um, this vault here. Uh, now, practically speaking, and from an engineer's perspective, um, these three-dimensional models are, are, are neat, but uh, they aren't very helpful for making engineering decisions. Um, they have their place for sure. But let, let me show you some types of uh, uh, data that you can receive from a laser scan vendor uh, that's a little more helpful for engineering purposes. So what you could do is do a laser scan inspection to evaluate the extent of corrosion in a culvert. Uh, so this is a uh, typical report figure that Red Zone Robotics pulls together. So what we can see here is a CCTV video inspection uh, image of the inside of the culvert. And as you can see, you know the inside is pitted, so there's definitely some corrosion happening here. Now, what we're seeing here is a profile of the, the culvert at the location that this image was taken. So the blue circular line is what the internal profile of that culvert should be. And the, uh, the uh, blue line, the more jagged line, is what the actual culvert condition is. And so as you can see, the culvert has a lot of corrosion at the 3 o'clock and the uh, 9 o'clock position. Uh, down the middle of this line, this is a strip map. So what this is, is the um, uh, corrosion that one experiences throughout the entire length of the culvert. And uh, areas where it's you know, a darker color red is showing you areas where there's higher levels of corrosion. So there's higher uh, erosion of the pipe wall due to corrosion. One can also use uh, sonar or laser scan inspection to measure debris in a culvert. 
So what we're seeing here is uh, the observation of debris at this point in the pipe. Uh, and so as you can see at the you know six o'clock position or so, there's this bump in the, the blue profile line. And what that bump is, is the uh, debris deposits. So if you measure debris throughout the entire culvert, what you could do is get a good estimate of the amount of debris that's in that culvert. And that might be helpful if you're trying to tell somebody you know, how much debris is in a culvert for the purposes of, of them bidding to you know, clean this pipe out. Another common uh, evaluation is pipe ovality. So this is an HDPE pipe that was inspected using laser scan inspection. So right here is an example of a piece of uh, HDPE pipe that's almost perfect. It's, it's barely deflected. The uh, green line and the blue line, so the what the culvert's profile is and what it um, should be are identical. So this is showing that this pipe is perfectly in round. Now this area here is an area where there's been some, some deformation of the culvert. So the green profile, so what the profile should be, is uh, much different than the blue profile. Uh, so what this blue profile is, 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 is what the, you know, the wall profile actually is. And as you can see, it's um, getting pinched in at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position. And then it's bulging out at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. So, uh, you know, what we're seeing here is that this section of, of plastic culvert has deformed 16.4% from what it should be. Similarly, we have a uh, strip map down the middle, and this is giving us an almost three-dimensional view of uh, how this, this deformation uh, is oriented relative to the rest of the culvert. So advantages of multiple sensor inspection. Uh, multiple sensor inspection gives you highly quantified data about the geometry of a culvert. Um, so this red zone inspection we did was able to measure the ovality of the culvert to a tenth of a percent. So we do get good documentation of that culvert's geometry. Another advantage is that MnDOT does own some laser scanning equipment, so there may be some opportunities there uh, to work with MnDOT staff to use in-house equipment. Now, disadvantages of multiple sensor inspections. Uh, these inspections are sensitive to site conditions, so you need to make sure that your uh, sensors are calibrated and are appropriate for the size of culvert that you're, you're, you're going in. So if you have a laser scan unit that's calibrated for a very small diameter culvert and you're using it at a very large diameter culvert, uh, your results might not be as effective. Uh, another disadvantage is that there aren't any local service providers. So, you know, we did need to retain an out-of-state uh, laser scan contractor to come in and do this type of inspection. Uh, so there is a cost premium there. Um, another disadvantage is there is data processing time. So we're collecting a lot of highly technical data about the inside conditions of this culvert. And so the inspection vendor does need to take this and then evaluate it and you know, develop uh, uh, the, the data so that we get some good results. Um, now, for this pilot test we did, we experienced a lag between collecting the data and receiving the results of about four weeks. So I, I guess what I'm saying here is if you need the data faster than four weeks, you, you definitely want to have a discussion with the multiple sensor vendor up front about what your time constraints are. Laser scan inspections are the high-tech method of getting a very precise measurement of a culvert's ovality. Now, a lower-tech method, um, but yet a much more common method, is to conduct a mandrel inspection of a culvert to understand its ovality. So a mandrel inspection involves a person uh, pulling a gauged mandrel through the culvert. So you set this, uh, this mandrel to be, you know, whatever the maximum amount of allowable deflection is for that culvert. You pull it through, and if that uh, mandrel gets stuck, you know that that culvert has deflected uh, more than it should be, more than it's allowed. Now, often you want to use mandrel inspections on plastic pipe, uh, because plastic pipe really is the pipe that deforms more than other pipe materials. Um, you know, concrete pipe, uh, you know, that tends to crack or fracture before it really deforms to a degree that you'd see for a plastic pipe. 
So a lot of times what people do is they use mandrills to conform to, to confirm that the uh, ovality of a culvert is meeting the limits that are specified uh, in design documents. Often the uh, cost of mandrel inspection is included uh, with the cost of new construction. So that's just something that a construction contractor builds into the cost as part of the acceptance testing process. Uh, if for some reason MnDOT would like to purchase a mandrel, uh, we're seeing that mandrel costs are typically ranging between you know, $200 for a six inch to $1,000 for a 27 inch mandrel. And then that cost does increase as you get bigger than a 27 inch. Uh, the rate of inspection for mandrill depends on the setup time and the access to the site. But uh, in our experience, you know, you can inspect you know, about one culvert per hour, so about 300 feet per hour. So advantages of mandrill inspections are that you get immediate results. If you pull that mandrill through a culvert and it goes all the way through, you know that it has not deflected more than you need it to. So you, you know immediately that that culvert has passed its uh, acceptance test. Uh, the other advantage of mandrel inspections are that the results are very difficult to dispute. Uh, if your mandrel gets stuck, it's hard to disagree that the pipe has deflected less than you know, the gauged value of that mandrel test. Uh, now some disadvantages of mandrel inspections. Um, mandrel inspections are giving you limited data on the extent of deflection. What I mean by that is a mandrel test is really a pass-fail test. If the mandrel doesn't go all the way through the pipe, it fails, and if it does, it passes. Now, a laser scan inspection is going to tell you how deflected the pipe is to, you know, a tenth of a percent. So you're getting a lot more information there. So the uh, next inspection we're going to talk about is hammer sound testing. Uh, what we wanted to do is include some uh, more structural material-based inspection techniques for this enhanced inspection manual. So this is a very uh, low-tech structural inspection of the internal condition of a concrete culvert. Uh, so what you do, the, the inspection method here, is you get inside a culvert, you have a standard carpenter's hammer, and you strike the uh, culvert's wall. And uh, as you strike that wall, you listen to the sound it makes. Now, if the uh, concrete has delaminated, so there's voids within the, the concrete, uh, you're going to hear a different sound than completely sound and solid concrete. Uh, just to be clear, uh, th this is the voids within the concrete. This is not talking about voids behind the concrete, so soil voids. Uh, what hammer sound testing is geared towards is measuring uh, air bubbles within the concrete. So uh, let's let's take a listen here. Uh, this is going to give you an example of um, two areas of sound concrete and then one area where there's a void within the concrete. That's sound, and that's a void. So advantages: uh, this is an incredibly low-cost, non-destructive test. Uh, to learn something about the structural integrity of a concrete culvert. Now, disadvantages, uh, hammer sound testing relies on the interpretation of the sound from the inspector. So you want to make sure the inspector, uh, you know, ha has a good ear for it and is familiar with what it sounds like to have sound concrete versus, um, you know, compromised or damaged concrete. Uh, another disadvantage, it is possible to get false positives depending on the acoustics within the culvert or the level of the groundwater uh, relative to the, the pipe. You know, if the groundwater is up high, um, you might hear some different sounds as you hit the hammer against the uh, concrete culvert wall. The, uh, the final enhanced inspection technique we're going to talk about is core sample testing. So this is another structural test of concrete culverts. So what we do here is uh, we enter a culvert and drill out a core of the culvert's walls. Um, you then want to immediately patch that sample location because you know it's not really best practice to leave big holes in the walls of your culverts. Uh, you then take that core sample and you 
conduct a compressive strength test per ASTM C39. So this is usually some sort of laboratory test using special equipment. Um, and what that test is going to tell you is the compressive strength of that core sample. And you can compare that compressive strength against the specified design strength of that culvert. So you can see, you know, has that culvert's wall strength degraded over time? So the advantages of core sample testing is it's a quantitative structural strength test. You know the compressive strength of that sample. Uh, and you can compare it against some sort of benchmark uh, that it should be based on its uh, design documents. Now, the uh, disadvantage of core sample testing, uh, this isn't a practical method for small diameter culverts. Uh, to collect a sample, you need to enter the culvert and you need to get a large enough sample that you can test it using the core sample testing equipment. Um, another disadvantage is that it is giving you low representation of the overall wall strength of the culvert. Um, you're only measuring small areas of culvert uh, structural condition. So you want to be smart about the areas that you're picking uh, to conduct this test. You want to pick areas where you sort of suspect there are issues um, so that you are getting interesting results that you can actually do something about.